Lord God, what truth there is to that verse that says that we shall walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, let us have the vision of your people, Lord God, the apostles and the prophets and David. Help us with this in Jesus' name. Amen. It is a difficult thing to walk by faith as if we knew the outcome of everything. As if we knew that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. The patriarchs all did that. You know, you look at Abraham, he was ready to sacrifice his son, Isaac, and was willing to do it because he knew his son was the promised seed. His son was going to take his place for the Jewish nation. So he was walking by faith when he was about to slay his son. His son was older and probably could have resisted him, and yet Isaac walked by faith and trusted his father, and God provided himself, notice that, a sacrifice. And later on, he provided himself a sacrifice, Jesus Christ, on the cross. These men and many others of our forefathers walked totally by faith with the, farmer, the promise being far off. Knowing salvation was going to come to not only the Jewish nation, but to all mankind. All the sea would be blessed. That was the promise of God. These people walked by faith. I want you to see the same thing here in Psalm 9 and in verse 3. David is speaking, and I want to just read the first part of this verse. We're only doing one verse today, but I want to read the first part first and explain it. Notice what he says. When my enemies are turned back, comma, I'm going to stop there. He didn't say, turn back my enemies. He didn't say, you know, that the enemies are coming after me. He said, when my enemies are turned back. God made him a promise that his enemies were going to be turned back. He was going to be king. And David believed it. You know, one of the things that I really missed when I went through struggles when I was in New York through my job and people were persecuting me and I was walking right with God, I knew that if the Lord searched me, he would find that I was doing what he wanted. And if I didn't, if there was something wrong, I would fix it quick. And I knew I was going to have victories. I'm not that I didn't get frightened sometimes because I thought I was going to lose my job many a time. But I saw a little bit. I wish I had more of that today. When my enemies are turned back. You know, you see a lot of things going on in our nation that go against God and fly in the face of Christianity. And we can know that my enemies will be turned back. It might not be in my lifetime, but they're going to be turned back. And I should actually be interceding for them so when they turn back, they won't be destroyed, but rather maybe come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let's read the second part of that verse. They shall fall and perish at thy presence. Again, I read the whole verse. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. One day, all the enemies of Christianity will face God. And what is going to happen? They'll fall and perish at his presence. In the meantime, as Christians, we should be interceding on their behalf 
our, our kings and leaders praying for their behalf that they will not have to suffer eternal judgment. That we would have victory, but the victory would be the salvation of their souls. So until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.